Hello everybody, hope you're doing great. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe, press the bell icon if you like the content and check out the top right eye for more nice links. Here we are, we're gonna do some more polishing here to start off with. And then we're gonna look into what more we can add to our game. First of all, the plan is to optimize our game state a little more because I want the player to be able to take damage eventually. And for that, I want this update combat function to be free. I don't want it to be held up by if statement here. The only time this update combat will run is when the init attack will be triggered. And I don't want that. So I'm gonna control X the whole thing, remove the little if statement. Remember to copy that insides of that if statement. And I'm gonna paste it inside here, inside update combat, and then new line and a two double and operand here and operator once that is done you are good to go pretty much now we can we can check for damage down here from the enemy but we'll get to that in a bit let's let's add a comment here check for enemy damage there you go but the problem right now i'm facing is that there's a few ugly things right now in our game for example these negative tags and all these things are a little ugly i don't like that so i just want to spend a little bit of time optimizing that making it look a little nicer so I want you to pause the video and just make your text tags look like this. Now you can do it any way you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it so you don't have to, we don't have to waste a lot of time. Just make sure they look like this. And it can be a little tough, but I promise you once you do it, it's gonna look a lot nicer. All right, so once you do it, it should look like this. I know I'm kind of cheating here, but what I what I changed was the character sizes and the accelerations and max speeds and all that. This is something I like. It looks a little nicer, I'd say. Now I'm going to change a few things in here. So for example, where the negative tag is, is set and all that stuff. So I'm gonna just add a minus negative 50 here, hard coded. So that's gonna be a little better position, I'd say for the negative tag to spawn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to default tag. And I was testing something so you can remove this minus 50. And once this is done, this will look a little nicer when you hit the enemies. You can remove that little post fix there. And then we're gonna search for experience experience tag and this tag is placed a little weirdly so i'm going to add the minus 50.f here and that will spawn it in a little better position i'm going to remove the plus from the exp add the plus in the prefix section which will look a little better as we run this we'll just see that everything works our damage works damage numbers look a little better seven four like that it looks a little better all the attacking works still Great, now I want a simple way for the player to take damage. For that, we're just gonna add something here. Very, very simple. We're gonna do enemy get global bounds dot intersects player get global bounds like that. And this will just check if we are getting attacked by the enemy. I'm gonna add a little text tag whenever that happens. And I'm gonna say player lose HP enemy get attribute component damage max just for now just for now it's we're gonna add a nice little damage type thing for the enemy later on but we're gonna do this int dmg and you can just control x that paste it up there instead so you have a local variable and then dmg like that and dmg right there Running this shows us that, okay, we'll, we'll die very fast because there's no timer keeping us from dying very fast. So we'll continuously take damage. So we need a damage timer for player. And that's very simple, just like we did before. We just need to add a damage timer here. So SF clock damage timer, and then a SF int 32 damage timer max and initialize these just like we did for any everything else right in here we're gonna say this damage timer max we can take damage every 500 milliseconds so 500 good and the timer the sf clock will restart by itself the damage timer so you don't have to worry about that let's create a very simple const bool get damage timer and then we're gonna define it of course just like before and if we look at enemies get damage timer done it's a little different because it just returns if it's done or not and then you restart it manually we're not going to do that here we're going to just straight up restart it inside so find your get damage timer and you just check if this damage timer dot get elapse time as milliseconds is greater or equal to this damage timer max then we're going to return true but we're also going to restart the timer inside that. Otherwise, we're going to return false. This will give you a very simple uh, damage timer function, just like, like we always do. This damage timer dot restart. Take that, our new beautiful timer, and just add it inside here. So if it intersects with the player and player get damage timer, then we'll take some damage. And we can change this to a negative tag and add it to the player at minus 50 and run it. So it'll be more at the center of the player basically. 
new game and you'll see we're taking damage from the enemy uh, nothing is happening when we are at zero but that doesn't matter the point is that our timer works and that we can take damage if you want you can add some more flair to this you can say minus hp like that and that will give you a nicer look that depends completely on how you want to do it now we have a player that can take some damage we have more nice text tags and we have things moving forward what i want to do is a little more fix for the player so we're going to switch this from wep from sword to weapon and we're going to call this weapon as well and of course this is going to bug out a lot of things for example our player here so we just want to copy paste weapon to all the spots where it's red so in the player destructor in the get weapon down here at the update function and of course the rendering once that's done you have a more general way and this should just work just out the bat because eventually I want to add a weapon for our enemies so we can easier control the range that they can attack in. And that makes it a little easier for us to work. If we have, if we rely on the attribute component constantly, it won't really work. One more thing that we have been putting off and this is very important. Hopefully you're still with me here. We have a get damage min and max, but we also have a get damage in our weapon class, weapon.h. If you go in there and look, you'll see a get damage. But what this get damage does not do, if we go and look inside it, is that it just takes the weapons damage and adds it and gives that damage back. What I want to do for the player is use the attribute components damage as well, as well as the weapons damage. And that's a pretty quick fix. If we go into our weapon CPP and just copy this whole thing and go into our player here, player.h, we're going to create a function called get damage. I'm going to do that right down here, const unsigned get damage. And this will add both the the attribute components damage and the swords damage or any weapon that we have and beautifully return that and then this will turn red but we're gonna do this let's go into the cpp file as well it looks a little better so first of all let's divide this up so we can see what's going on one semicolon we can keep the rand here and we can move down the plus as well here we go now this damage max we need to get from the attribute component this attribute component damage max and copy the whole thing paste it here but change this to damage min plus one keep that and then we go down to our damage min and do the same thing this attribute component damage min and there you go but now the only thing left to do is to get weapon get damage min and then we're gonna do this get this weapon sorry this should be max on the top and the lower one should be min i'll add a few more of these parentheses here just to make sure that the damage min and max are added first it will still be added first but i'll just do it so it's a little easier to see hopefully and the bottom here we have the damage min i just want to add that with the weapons damage min now we have a player get damage function make sure you pause the video and look at this carefully so you get this because it's very important but once that's done let's go to our game state again and wherever we do take give the damage let's remove this get weapon and just use the player's own get damage now we're gonna run this and you take you do some damage you'll see that you're doing a little more damage than what you did before and this is because i'm adding the attributes component great guys pretty much that's it for this video uh, a little more polished some more damaging we added damaging to the player fixed the weapon thing uh, added a few cool polishes to the text tags and changed up the damage system in game state a little bit for how the player does damage where that is called and all that hopefully that was fun and that you liked it please take care please keep learning and thanks for sticking with me. Drop a like, subscribe, press the bell icon. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.